Welcome back to another episode of MC Airsoft. My name is Mark and today we're going to be discussing how I paint rifles. All right, this is just my opinion. There's a lot of videos on YouTube or, you know, articles on blogs, whatever you subscribe to um, that talk about how to paint them. Frankly, if you follow an Airsoft channel or if you follow a uh, Real Steel channel, there's probably a video on there talking about how to paint rifles or at least how they paint rifles. And I will say there's no one particular way of doing it. This is my way. This is what works for me. You do you. If you pick up some ideas from this, great. Uh, if you don't, well, that's on you. <laughs> so, um, first of all, why to paint a rifle? Frankly, if you're playing outdoors, right? Obviously, if you're playing CQB, you know you're not you're not really blending it. And you might be able to hide for an extra millisecond, and maybe that's worth it to you. But for the most part, you're you're probably not blending in. Um, there's a reason that even high level, high ranking, whatever you want to call it, speed QB players, they aren't painting their guns from what I've seen. And they're wearing, you know, brighter color clothing, again, from what I've seen. Um, and it's because the, the <clears throat> ability to camouflage yourself in CQB doesn't really matter that much, right? Because frankly, if you see someone at that range, you're probably gonna see them anyway. You're not, they're not hiding from you. Um, so, you know, CQB, you might go in with a rifle like this, color-wise, right? Um, and that's fine, that's absolutely fine. Um, because as soon as they see that barrel, I should be shooting them, they should be shooting me. I'm not really gonna be hiding, uh, so. You know, painting doesn't really matter. Uh, it's just aesthetics at that point. Um, it doesn't really give you an advantage. Now, I will say, obviously, there is an aesthetic quality to it, right? If you like the look of a painted rifle, then, you know, that might be a reason to paint your rifle. Um, one thing I will say about styles, you see a lot of these uh, worn, weathered, whatever, um patterns on rifles and sure enough I have a fair bit of weathering on this one and that's just from use. Uh, I don't go in and weather my rifles uh, whether they're real or airsoft I don't weather them. Um, go, coming in and out of bags, gun cases, things like that. Uh, walking around it's going to rub on your kit. Um, you take that hard stance against the barricade you're gonna get wear on the rails, maybe on the barrel, hopefully not, but maybe on the barrel. Um, and just working it, you're going to get that kind of wear. So I wouldn't, personally, I don't worry about that too much if that's what you're looking for. There's a couple different techniques, I'll go over briefly, that you can paint your rifle as normal and go over steel wool. Um, you know, a fine grit steel wool, uh, a quadruple lot, triple lot, something like that. And maybe hitting the sharp edges up here around the scope, maybe on the rails, uh, going over the grip. Uh, you don't want to use sandpaper because, frankly, there's a lot of plastic parts on this that you, you, you're just going to wear away the plastic. You don't want to wear away the, um, the actual finish of it. Um, or the actual material of it. <clears throat> and then from there, you can go in with, uh, you can, wa uh, removing all electronics, go in with watered down black paint, and you can do carbon buildup. You can do brown paint for rust or um, dirt grime buildup. Oil paints are going to look like oil um, more than acrylic paints. It's just stuff to keep in mind. Uh, there's uh, plenty of great proc channels um, that you can check out, uh, like Punished Props is a great one for that, uh, if you want to go down that road. It's not really what I do, but, you know, whatever floats your goat. So, um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to hit it with a degreaser. I like Simple Green. 
if that's not available in your uh, in your area, any plastic safe degreaser is going to be just fine. Um, again, I like simple green. That's what I'm going to recommend, but it might not be available where you are. And frankly, what we're going to do there is most of these guns are water resistant. Airsoft guns mostly are water resistant. Uh, so, <clears throat> you know, don't hose it down. Don't spin it around and get it right into the gearbox. But as, as long as the dust cover is closed, you can pretty well get away with just hosing it down from a distance with a spray bottle on a mist setting and that's going to drain most of the oils and stuff off and that's really all you need to do you don't need to go too crazy there are solvents out there that you might use on real guns that are going to dissolve airsoft guns so be careful about that uh, second and the reason i got this here right blue tape now um, don't get the super cheap stuff i like clean release um, you know, they're different brands have different names for it, but uh, painter's tape that is designed to not leave tape residues, right? Um, so, and then, uh, or Edge Lock is another good one. Um, not sure who makes it, I think it might be 3M uh, or Duck, one of the two. Uh, but Edge Lock is good, clean release is good, you know, just spend a little bit of money you're not going to be using the whole roll roll on one paint job unless you're doing a weird design to it or you know something along that line um and what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take take this tape and go over anywhere you don't want um you don't want paint getting it on or into right so personally i paint all mine with a magazine in uh, that gives me at least one magazine that fits the color of the rifle, which is good. Um, you can also, before painting it, or while you're painting it, I guess, uh, but you can take the top of the magazine, especially like on AR magazines, how they have this spot that's in the magwell the whole time, and you can paint that a bright fluorescent color, an orange, green, a pink, whatever you want. Um, and it's when it's in the gun, you're not going to see it again, airsoft gun or whatever. I'm just going to say gun for it. But when it's in the gun, uh, you can't see it. And, uh, if you drop it, if someone snags it out of your bag, whatever the case is, hopefully no one's doing that, but it does happen. We're all human and there are turds everywhere. Uh, but it's going to show that this is your mag because if you're carrying four, green neon green mags uh and you see someone else with a neon green mag you can be like hey that's it's my magazine it fits all of my other magazines um a lot of the times what i'll do and i haven't done it to this one because this is uh, a broken magazine uh, that i use for display um haven't done it on this one but um a lot of the times i'll sharpie and just put my initials on it something of that nature so, um, so I leave my uh, magazine in. Um, that's really all you need to do unless you're hosing directly in with the spray paint. We'll go over techniques of how to use spray paint in a second. You're gonna wanna cover all your glass. And the way I do that is I just take the piece of tape and I will run it. Obviously you're gonna need more than one piece, but I just run it straight across, so something like that, run it straight across the glass. That way when I'm spraying around it, I'm going to run right up to that edge. If you come down onto it, even, uh, if, you, uh, even if you put a line around it, you're still going to have a line of color of that scope, whatever it is. And uh, that's a personal preference thing. I'm just not a huge fan of how it looks. Obviously, you want to do it on the other end. Uh, one important thing is you're going to want to put um, tape down in the barrel, right? Um, not in, Sorry, not in the barrel, but over the barrel so paint doesn't get down into the barrel. Um, if you have exposed a gearbox or something like this, like my dust cover's broken, 
so that's something I need to fix, but it's not a high priority item. Um, so make sure that's closed. A uh, little dab of uh, gel glue, hot glue, something like that might hold that closed, whatever works for you. Um, if you're painting an AK, you're going to want to make sure that the dust cover is all the way forward and maybe putting some, if you don't have a battery in there, you might want to put something in there to hold the dust cover in place so you don't get anything down there. Again, uh, in the barrel, now all these are cleared and batteries out, so um, for any safety Nazis there. Um, and then if you don't have a magazine in it, strip of tape along there is great. Uh, that works just fine. Um, and make sure, uh, and this goes for any type of gun you're painting, but <clears throat> make sure that uh, you have like your stock extended. Have it in the position you plan on using it primarily. But also if it's extended, then you don't have to worry about it. You can get paint on both sides. Um, so yeah, just taping over whatever you don't want paint on. If you don't want it on the trigger, don't, uh, you know, you're going to want to tape up your trigger. Uh, if you don't want it, if you have maybe a, a red dot magnifier, you'll have to tape those lenses in, in addition to the red dot. If you have a light like this one, okay, this has a light. So I'm going to want to tape over the light if I'm painting the light to match. Okay, um, with flip up sights, I'm probably going to paint them up. That way there's paint on the back, doesn't look as weird. Um, and also it gets on the rail without having to fiddle with it. Um, and then I'll go ahead and pull the stock all the way out. Um, now you can paint it where it, where you like it. So for me, it's about there, about that distance. So you can just paint it there, but then if you ever run it like that, you're going to have a black ring, personal preference. Uh, black, a little black ring like that's not going to give you away. So uh, I wouldn't worry about it too much. Um, you know, um, things like this grip pod. Um, I paint it with the grip pod extended. So that way these legs aren't, um, uh, whatever color your grip pod is or whatever color your bipod or whatever is. Uh, but for bipods, I'll go ahead and extend them. That way the legs get painted as well. Um, again, that's a completionist thing. It's not necessarily going to give you away. Uh, if you have holes in your uh, motor casing, whatever kind of airsoft gun you're using, um, you want to make sure you plug those holes. Um, but yeah, that's the gist of it. Just cover anything you don't want. Um, paint to get on. Um, things like forward assist, personally, I just paint those, you know, that sure they're spongy, they don't do anything for airsoft, but if you give it a few plays, it looks like, you know, you actually used it. Um, so a little bit of breaking in, a little bit of lived in kind of a look. Uh, so you're going to want to tape everything off and I'm not going to be painting this per se on camera, uh, but uh, what I recommend for paint is Rust-Oleum Camouflage. Um, I've been using it for years and it just works. Uh, lots of different colors. Uh, when you are deciding on your color scheme, if you want to go for camouflage, I recommend going to where you're going to be playing or at least looking at photo references and kind of deciding on the color scheme based off of that. You know, there might be a lot of uh, sands. There's never going to be a lot of black, um, but there might be a lot of sand colors, a lot of light tans. There might be a lot of dark browns. There might be some red if there's a lot of iron in the dirt. Um, there might be a lot of green because you got to think about the changing of the seasons as well, that there might be green um, when you play, but not when you're getting your photo references. And I'll paint mine at least once a year kind of thing, maybe twice, depending on how drastically the uh, seasons change. Um, how do I paint or how do I hold it? Well, you could lay it out on a cardboard sheet or any kind of protective sheet. So 
Um, it doesn't get a bunch of um, spray on the ground or, you know, it doesn't stick to the ground because the paint does have an adhesive quality when it dries uh, and that'll mu uh, muck about with your paint job too. Um, so that is an option, but you have to let it fully dry before you flip it over to the other side. And personally, how I paint when I'm doing that is I'll do one side, flip it over, do the other side, flip it back, of course, waiting for drying. Then I'll put my foliage, I'll put my ropes, I'll put whatever I'm using as my, you know, air quotes, stencil, and I'll spray it down again, do the same thing on the other side, and back and forth until I get a product I'm happy with. Um, so I started, um, I can't remember what channel mentioned this, but uh, someone was talking about um, roping it up to, you know, rafters or something of that nature. Uh, you can use um, an overhang on a porch as well, just getting it up off the ground in a well-ventilated area that you don't mind getting paint on the gist of it <clears throat> so personally I prefer roping it because then I can even come up here twist the rope to spin the rifle um, and maneuver it as I want but also I can get both sides I can walk around it getting both sides I can do what I need to do um, so I recommend um, you know you gotta have a plan for what you're doing I recommend having a like sit down and think about what your uh, stencils are going to be what your colors are going to be um, for instance if I am in an area with a lot of dark brown trees and I put down a tan coat and I put on my uh, my rope and then I spray a dark brown over that well now I'm gonna have a dark brown rifle with uh, essentially tan limbs, which might work in the desert. Uh, some places in deserts might work, uh, but not in a, uh, you know, Northeast uh, United States kind of, um, you know, kind of uh, like a, uh, or like a Minnesota kind of forest, right? The, everything's alive, vibrant, dark brown trees. Um, maybe gray trees depending on where you live but um, but that is something to keep in mind so maybe in that case you want to go dark brown base putting the rope over or whatever you're using and then light brown over that if that's the color scheme you're going for if you want to go nice and simple you can go dark brown and then come in with your tan and just do your randomized lines um, and that's easy, but it'll fit a lot of environments. Um, the more you do to your paint job, the more specific it is going to be, the less it's going to be applicable across platform, across uh, different scenarios, if you travel a lot, or if it changes seasons a lot where you are. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do for this uh, in particular is I might do a green you know, or a, um, in this case, I think it was a dark brown. Uh, so you can see here, nice dark brown. And then I got my rope. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie it up here, uh, not tying a proper knot, just holding it in place. And then I'm going to spin the rifle. Um, and I'm not being very particular. I just want these nice big branches. Now one thing to keep in mind, right, I didn't put out my bipod, but whatever. Okay, and then around to the bottom, and then you can go back up. Uh, this is a short piece of rope, so this one isn't going to go all the way back up, but nice randomized pattern, something like that. Just tucking it in underneath the, the scope there. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, is you want your uh, you want it running perpendicular you want your patterns largely perpendicular to the rifle because the human eye is looking for a horizontal rifle um, so it is looking for uh, something like this it is looking for a long uh, dark object and what we're doing is breaking up the pattern 
So being that this is running this way, if I give it a camouflage pattern running perpendicular, it helps break it up for the natural natural eye. Um, got the hiccups. Uh, so if you look at something like this, this is my uh, uh, desert tiger top. Um, this is the the back of it, right? But if you look, I stand horizontal, the pattern is, uh, sorry, I stand vertical, the pattern is running horizontal. So it kind of breaks that up. So then, you know, I'm going to spray on my, so I sprayed on the dark tan, I've run the rope around it, or sorry, dark brown, run the rope around it, and then I might um, put on uh, a tan, a lighter tan, uh, or maybe I put on uh, smaller branches first. That's what I did here. So this smaller uh, natural fiber rope. Um, sticking with natural fibers means that it's going to give it a blurred pattern, which is kind of what you want. It's a little more natural. Uh, but same thing, I'm going to hook it on somewhere. Uh, I already have a knot in that end, so I'm just going to loop it over the rope. Right, and then I'm going to spin the rifle. Um, so, and I'm gonna make this a little more dense in pattern, right? A little more, a few more uh, vines, branches, whatever you're envisioning uh, than before. I might come in here, get a couple there, okay, and spin the rifle. I not really putting too much thought into it, uh, just kind of randomizing as much as possible. And um, the more random, the better it's going to look, um, and the more it's going to work, right? And that's kind of what we're getting at: is we're painting for utility. We're not necessarily painting for looks, uh, but something like that as my rifle untangles itself or unspins itself so that's great so there I have the dark um, I might go for like a sand I might mist on a dark green which is what I believe I did on this one I'll mist on a dark green in a randomized pattern I might follow these lines these uh, rope pieces with a color but um, I think in this particular case I went in with big uh, bold distanced lines so um, of uh, dark green so after you give it a good shape you're going to decide on what kind of pattern you want to do um, if you hold it up here and you give it a hard line that's going to make it very opaque that's going to make it very pronounced which might work depending on what you're doing but um, it doesn't look as natural in a lot of situations so um, if I'm doing something like covering these or I'm just laying down a dark green kind of tone to it, I'm going to, even though this says, you know, what, 12 inches or so, um, I might do that for the base coating. I might do that for some of the coats, but if I'm just dusting it, if I'm just uh, going to be uh, giving it a tint of certain colors, like a tint of green, like you're getting on the stock up here, I'm going to back off about 18 to 24 inches, depending on how light I want it to be. And I'm going to do it that way. Make sure that you do clean your nozzle if you're doing that, though. Uh, you can take a pin. If it's still wet, you can use a fingernail. Uh, but clean your nozzle, because otherwise you're going to get droplets all over the place. If you want that, great. If you don't want that, clean your nozzle. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to... So I put down my dark green and I'm going to look at where it's kind of clumped up. So maybe there's a clump up here on the stock. This is a laundry bag that I've had forever. Um, but it makes for an interesting um, snakeskin or maybe leaf kind of pattern. We're making leaves is what we're doing here. So I'll just put it up there. And I'll look dark green up there. I'll spray a little bit of light green, a little bit of light green, a little bit of light green all over it in a kind of randomized pattern, but kind of following that dark green. Uh, you can also take it in a bunched up fashion spray through 
but you'll have to get a little bit closer um, spray through. You could also take it and put it over the entire gun. Right, apparently my this rifle's too too long for this bag, but you get the idea. Um, if I really cared, I could cut apart the bag and stretch it out out longer. Um, this is a little that would be a little more preferable if you're allergy season. Um, <laughs> if you're uh, painting it two D on like on the ground or on a cardboard box or something, you could cut along the seams on the sides and stretch out the bag so it covers the entire gun. But um, so it, yeah, so you're looking at. Uh, just spraying that that would be good if you want to go for more of the like I guess Crytek look uh, You saw that I saw this a lot more In like the um, Late 2000s early 2010s. I don't see a lot of people camouflaging their rifles anymore unless they're really into mill sims, but um, But yeah, you can um, this would be good for if I maybe did a dark brown coating and then I came back in, stretched the bag over it, and just hit it with tan uh, stripes. So I'm getting pre predominantly a brown rifle with tan stripes on it. Um, but that tan would then be broken up. Uh, what I would recommend if you're doing that is go like dark brown, whatever your base coat is. Uh, come back in with um, a bag or something, you know, of that nature. Put it over the entire rifle. Put tan stripes all over that. So there's uh, tan checker or tan scales, whatever you want to call it, in stripes. And then come back in um, with... Uh, you know, a different color and go over the brown. Um, so you get a little bit more variation in there. You could also paint it brown, go through, uh, put the bag over it, do the whole thing in tan, and then come back in and do stripes of brown over the tan. It's up to you. You can play around with it. Uh, there are some really cool patterns you can do that will fit different environments and still have that like Instagram quality, you know. Uh, but uh, this is a little bit, a little breakdown on how to paint a rifle for m more for blending in. Uh, if people want it, uh, we can go over how to, you know, paint in like decals and stuff like that. Uh, it's not really my thing, but I've done it on like Nerf guns and stuff over the past when. You know, friends or friends' kids uh, want it done. Uh, it's uh, it's up to you how you paint your gun because it's your gun. At the end of the day, you spent your money on it. Um, so yeah. Um, so until next time, stay safe and stay hydrated.